I guess I'll say hi, everybody. I'm in my new studio, in my new home studio, and I'm wedging clay here. It's porcelain. And with porcelain, it's a little trickier than most clays because it's so soft, it's chalky, it works so fast. And I usually work in stoneware, I work in myolica, and I work in all kinds of clays. And I uh, have to have my hands in everything. But right now I'm working in porcelain, which is also, when it comes out, it is this pure white clay. That happens to be luster glaze. Very nice glaze, very hard to come by. But I like doing that and uh, love doing my pit fires. And I've just started something new, myolica clay, and I love that too. So clay has no boundaries. And I'm gonna show you a little throwing here. I'm going in slow motion. So if you're a student, you can see how I'm wedging the clay. And it's an easy roll back and forth. And I have tossed that around about 50 times. Some people do 100. The more you do it, the better it is. Throw it around. Get all those seams out. And then pound it into a nice round little ball here. This is an average piece of clay. Make a nice little bowl or vase. Clay is very forgiving. If you make a mistake, unlike other art forms, you can just wedge it back up, start all over again. Okay. We'll take a trip over my wheel. And give it a good throw. We're doing a little centering of the clay right now. And traditionally, you raise it up three times, push it right back down three times. But some people take a little longer. With porcelain, it's so slippery and so chalky that you don't want to fool with it too much because you lose the tooth. And like I said, different clays handle differently. When I teach my students, I start with earthenware. And that's a good student's clay to start with. It moves easily. And, uh, and the colors are very bright. The glazes you can use. They're just gorgeous, bright, primary type colors that you can't get with the stoneware. And it is gaining in popularity again. Stoneware is the softest of all the clays, porcelain being the hardest. I'm just going to compress my rim right here and compress the bottom mopping up all the water. Different tools uh, that you use are the sponges of course, ribs of all sizes and shapes, rim tools of all sizes and shapes, cutaway tools, uh, sponges on a stick, anything you want that makes your job easier However, your best tool are the old hands and sponge and water. So I'm just going to open this up on the bottom a little bit. And compress the bottom. And with porcelain, it's very important, very, very important to get your bottom compressed. There's a lot of warpage and cracking with porcelain. So if you don't do all these steps right along, you'll end up with a mess. I use porcelain for the pit fires, which I'll show you later. And of all the things I have a passion for would be the pit fires. Love doing them. Thrown the same way. Traditionally, they're coil built. But of course, I've modernized it my way, and uh, I don't do the coil bill. Now all I'm doing now are raising the sides, spreading it out into a bowl. And 
and just continue compressing that rim. And like I said, the porcelain does not like to be manipulated too much, so the quicker you get to your shape, the better. The other thing with porcelain that's kind of fun is you can get it to your shape, but then most of the, the thinness occurs when you trim it. And you trim it when it's leather hard, which I won't be able to show you, but there's various trim tools. So I've got to get this bottom compressed even more. Use a rib, one of my favorites. Every, every potter has their favorite tools. I think in pottery, one of the interesting things, when I teach my students, I say, there's no right way or wrong way, it's your way. I can teach the basics, or can anybody else teach the basics, but then you have to take it and run with it. Uh, everybody's hands are different, they move differently. I'm just slowing the wheel down a little bit, pull that rim right out. I haven't even looked at what I've made, so I'm going to sit back a little bit. Now with porcelain, you want to do double ribbing. It's the only way to really get it smooth. I guess this is a lesson in how to throw porcelain more than anything. And like I said, it becomes very chalky and if you take porcelain too far, all that will happen, it will just flop all of a sudden. I always say when the clay starts screaming at you, stop. And my students have heard that a lot. Somebody once told me when I started early on uh, that clay will change your life. And I thought, how strange. He's saying, Che, clay will change your life. No, no, but it did. It really did. It took me on a career. I stopped one career and went into this full force. I think you know if you love clay or hate it as soon as you put your hands on it. There's no sitting in the middle with clay. Like playing in mud as a kid. Brings out the child in us. There. I probably could just push that out a little further. And this is your simple bowl. Uh, this is what I always begin students with is a bowl. And why? Clay loves being a bowl. It's just the easiest form. It goes right into a bowl. And then you can go from there. But if you can't make a good, good decent bowl, then I guess you shouldn't be in pottery. Just like I tell them, if you can't center, it's like a gymnast not being able to do a somersault. So everybody should work right away on centering. Okay, and there's your basic bowl. We'll cut that away, give it a little shape. But I would trim this later, being porcelain. Once again, compressing these sides. Now porcelain is what I use a lot for the pit fires. Uh, all kinds of clays used, but I find that porcelain picks up the colors of the earth a lot more. Even though it's harder. Okay, I guess that's, I'm getting off a tangent now because I love pit fire. I love talking about it.
And water is the all-time lubricant for your clay. And I try and keep a neat wheel, as you can see. And I'm just going to wire this off, and then I will trim it later. But that's your basic bowl.